remember my grandpa Jack Martin quite well. He smoked a pipe. He could do the Scotsman crossword really quickly and he used to read Latin and Greek just for fun. He wasn't very chatty and he didn't show emotion. But today what I'm talking about, the person I'm talking about, is Jack Martin, the young man newly married to Mamie and setting off on their new life together in Nyasaland. Now, I've got a wee notebook to show you. Quite soon I was going to go into the Stirling University Library in the archive, Mamie Martin archive. But just now I'm going to share something from it. Before I do, I must just mention, I quite like a list. My daughter quite likes a list. Helen likes a list. My mother, Margaret, she quite liked a list. And evidently, my grandmother, Mamie, quite liked a list. Look at this. Beautiful handwriting. That's some of the clothes that were going with her to Malawi. Jumpers, one white woolen, one black crepe, one helio silk, one crimson and white. Blouses, four square, one white and blue, and so on. And other places in the wee book, the handwriting is different. I recognise this handwriting. That's my grandpa's handwriting. Not quite so pretty. And I think this is a list of things to take with them from home. Gun and cartridges, organ, four bookcases, two tables, two deck, deck chairs, two, card table. And then at the back, also in Jack's handwriting, and I think this is probably him picking up information from other more experienced travellers and tra missionaries on the boat. Two pounds of marifat lasts for two weeks. One sixty pound bag of sugar lasts for two months. One eight gallon drum of oil lasts for two months. One seventy pound bag of salt lasts for two months and so on. Household supplies he's talking about there. Very interesting. And now here are Jack and Mamie's own words. I think this, first of all, is, this is Jack in 1921, just arriving in South Africa. We had a splendid view of Table Mountain as we came in and saw the whole of Cape Town and the bay. Although it was eight o'clock when the customs were finished with us and it was too dark to see much, we went through the streets trying to realise it was Africa. So we have set foot in Africa and now feel we are missionaries and not travellers. And now, here's Mamie reflecting on the scenery that she's seeing. By this time they're off, they're on the smaller boat, the Empress, as they're going up the Shiri River up into Malawi. We, as time went on, the scenery became more mountainous and the air cooler. We knew that we were rising rapidly. The trees were all putting forth leaves, either green or that pinky shade, like young oak leaves. Mount Bolangi, towering into the clouds, is higher than any Scottish mountain, more than 10,000 feet. And here's my favourite. This is my favourite. This is from Grandpa, from, from, from Jack. This is on the 21st of November. The water of the lake is pure blue, very lovely after the muddy Zambezi and the sea at its mouth. The first night we put in at Monkey Bay on the peninsula at the south end of the lake. Next day we put in at Kota Kota, the old slave market. After sailing past Bandawi, morning found us 20 miles further up the lake at Nkata Bay, a beautiful double bay with two sandy beaches here on the 15th of November, last Tuesday, did all our wanderings cease and we were at last within the district that is to be our home. Zambia. Zambia.